in the this particular uh, session by introducing or rather briefly giving you a background of uh, what CSIR is uh, doing and CSIR initiative uh, related to carbon capture, utilization and sequestration uh, by with the help of four or five slides. So slides are visible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So actually, uh, uh, CSR has uh, identified this area of CCUS, uh, what we call it in abbreviated form, uh, as a high priority area. And a lot of uh, since last uh, several months or even uh, since last year, a lot of discussion, brainstorming, uh, interactions with uh, stakeholders, industry has happened and uh, uh, we are actually uh, consolidating all the activities happening across different uh, rather uh, at uh, 38, 39 CSR laboratories related to carbon capture, utilization and sequestration to uh, first is to establish a center or rather cluster of centers on CCUS uh, ultimately targeting at uh, uh, de developing and deploying uh, indigenous end-to-end -end and integrated uh, near carbon neutral and techno-economically feasible CCS solutions uh, along with the ecosystem. As we all know, uh, the entire, uh, this uh, relatively a uh, new, uh, relatively lesser mature area in India, particularly even globally, very few developments are there. So we have to really work on building the entire ecosystem. If we really want to successfully uh, deploy and develop these uh, technological interventions and solutions. So that is the whole uh, idea of uh, consolidating and uh, establishing a CSR cluster of centers for CCUS. Uh, we have had a lot of brainstorming and identified several leads uh, which uh, different CSR laboratories are actually pursuing in these areas. Uh, we, many of them are in advanced uh, TRL level of four, four, 4 and 5, which need upscaling and uh, uh, fine-tuning to further deploy uh, in the field. So, the complete uh, CCUS chain, we are uh, trying to address the gaps and uh, trying to help the, the partners and industries to establish these systems uh, right from emission sources to capture, CO2 capture, transportation, and uh, storage uh, either in geological uh, uh, formations or uh, min through mineralization or, or conversion to value-added chemicals. So entire uh, systems we are looking at. So these are the key goals of the proposed uh, center, CSR uh, center for CCUS, wherein majorly, as we all know, considering the huge scale of this particular uh, activity, we have to partner and we have to collaborate and join hands. So one is one aim is to partner with industry stakeholders and uh, academia, ministries, line ministries, etc. Second is to establish the share infrastructure, particularly for the testing, validation, refining, and integration of CCUS technologies. Because uh, as I mentioned, uh, these are in uh, lesser maturity stage uh, of uh, development. So we have to test them, validate them. Maybe uh, we have to refine them to uh, uh, so make them suitable for uh, Indian conditions or to fulfill the gaps and uh, develop uh, integrated solution, complete process package so that they can be used for the, uh, uh, for the field applications. And uh, others are like uh, development of techno-economy feasible and sustainable solutions as I have mentioned. I'm actually quickly going through the slides considering the time limitations. And uh, we are, uh, as I mentioned, addressing all the aspects of CCUS uh, chain wherein CO2 capture, utilization and sequestration and our laboratories having expertise in different areas are uh, working on different pathways from uh, related to these three major pillars of CCUS 
uh, right from the capture, maybe from uh, point sources or direct air capture from non-point so sources and uh, sequestration in geological formations and oceanic as well as terrestrial, terrestrial sequestration and lot of conversion pathways to urea, fertilizers, fine chemicals, etc. is being pursued and uh, uh, some of them are in advanced stage of development. And this particular uh, meet, we are focusing on this particular pathway of like capturing CO2 from a point source, sequestering it in the geological sequestration as we are discussing uh, in today's meeting and the earlier uh, panel discussion, a very important uh, area. And uh, among all these uh, pathways, it, this particular approach is at relatively mature relatively mature scale of uh, de deployment globally. So we can have more discussion on this during this B2B meet. And uh, we are actually uh, working on all the aspects of uh, uh, CO2 capture right from the remediation and also mitigation, like uh, what we can do to generate less CO2 from the process and major uh, focus in, is on hard to abate industrial sector where process itself generates uh, CO2 emissions and how to tackle those uh, emissions and also touching upon the hydrogen as uh, CCUS and hydrogen goes hands in hand and uh, uh, we have to close the loop with the hydrogen economy. What we are uh, trying to offer to the industry uh, as our partner is complete hand holding to achieve the emission reduction targets uh, faster technology transfers, preparation of industry specific roadmaps to achieve the emission reduction targets. Uh, also, a lot of a full basket of uh, services and uh, technological uh, solutions uh, we are trying to offer to, through these cluster of cen uh, centers on CCUS, uh, GHG emission inventories, benchmarking of CCUS technologies, feasibility studies, policy support and all, all these uh, related activities can be jointly undertaken uh, with the industry. Uh, and in fact, we are uh, in, already in discussion with several industries and uh, we request you all to please share your views on this and we can definitely take up all these activities uh, as an outcome of this particular meet. Uh, these are glimpses of some of the developments related to three major categories of capture, utilization, and sequestration, wherein uh, uh, like new molecules and materials for CO2 capture scale up to like one TPD demonstration systems, high temperature sorbents, uh, membranes for CO2 capture, and functionalized adsorbents and bioadsorbents uh, bio by different laboratories. Similarly, for utilization, a lot of uh, conversion uh, pathways have been uh, are being worked out and uh, using both electrochemical, photocatalytic, and catalytic approaches for conversion to value-added chemicals, including uh, CO2 to methanol formats, uh, syngas, green ammonia, etc., etc. And among sequestration, geological uh, is of course one of the prime focus, which is. No, it's not that. I will send the soft focus up. Prime focus for. Yes, sir. Check it. Then I can. These figures are correct. Only check. And similarly, uh, mineral carbonation and uh, terrestrial and oceanic sequestration are being pursued actively. So I will conclude. Uh, it was just a very quick uh, background or quick summary of what uh, we are. Uh, planning to uh, take up as a major initiative of CSIR as far as CCUS is concerned. And uh, we, we have more technical details which, which can be discussed subsequently or in the coming days uh, based on the specific interests. So we are consolidating our strengths and CSIR is hugely investing in this area to, to consolidate and uh, to focus the R&D efforts and translation to the field. We are establishing national facilities, uh, as I mentioned, shared infrastructure, a common platform, wherein partnership is the key among the laboratories, industry, stakeholders, and academic organization. And ultimately, uh, the focus is to provide an integrated end-to-end -end solutions. So that's all uh, from my side to begin with, and we 
Uh, I request uh, to to all the participants to discuss further and provide your valuable inputs. How we can really uh, join hands and take these uh, uh, activities further uh, jointly as as joint activities. Thank you. Thank you, Amit sir. Uh, Mitra sir, you are there, right? Sujit Mitra. Yes, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. present. Yes. Yes, sir. sir what uh, Dr. Bansiwal has presented is CSIR's initiative. CSIR is investing a, a lot of money in CCU oh. research, and uh, they have, uh, I mean, they have made a cluster of excellence with headquarter at Niri and all other labs like NGRI, Simfer. Uh, they, they will be like uh, working with collaboration with Niri to provide end-to-end -end solution for any CCUS problem. So right from capture, transportation, injection, then uh, monitoring, all the aspects we wanted to cover under this umbrella. So we really want ONGC to join hands with us and uh, collaborate with us when we are uh, formulating these uh, mega proposals. So if you want to say something from ONGC side. Thank you, thank you, madam, and uh, thank you, Dr. Amit, for uh, sharing uh, a presentation which clearly uh, brought out the ambition of CSIR and NIRI to, uh, in particular. Uh, this is uh, one area that uh, we have started, and as ONGC, I can tell you that we have started. We have working since we have been working since 2016, 15, and to be precise, and uh, we have come a uh, significant path. We have traveled. Uh, but as a for as a nation, because it's a one thing to concept a, uh, conceptualize one project, and it's a completely different thing if we really take the CCUS uh, and CCS in particular uh, geological storage. I'm talking about then it's it's a long way to go. And even if you look at the world and even a country like Norway, which is uh, the world leader in this, started injecting CO2 in 1997 uh, in Sleipnir, and uh, they have still could not uh, go beyond uh, Sleipner. They'll start the Northern Lights uh, in, in a years to come, but it, it takes long time uh, with enormous amount of uh, government support as well in a country like um, Norway, as well as in uh, Australia just started, uh, Canada, US. Uh, UK has a huge, huge ambitious plan uh, uh, for CCUS, as you know. And we also in India, there is government of India is taking a lot of initiatives. Uh, apart from CSIR, that which is a technical part of it, we will, uh, the Ministry of Petroleum Natural Gas will have already released a draft action uh, roadmap. Uh, probably people have seen. And uh, draft roadmap is there in the MOPNG site. And, um, and that roadmap will be released uh, anywhere between uh, the beginning of September to middle of September. And uh, so every stakeholder is uh, is uh, has been requested to give their uh, suggestions, because for to everything one is the technical part of it, and then until unless you you want to take it to the field, you need lot many things. You need a policy. You need regulation. You need a financial framework, regulatory framework, policy uh, definitions, because there is no policy even for CO2 transportation in India. We can transport hydrocarbon gas that Gale does it um, all over the years, but there is no policy even transportation of um, pure CO2. So, uh, and uh, I, I can tell you that huge amount of work need to be done as a nation. And uh, when you see definitely we, as you know that we have, uh, there is a uh, already a center of excellence uh, uh, from the DST declared uh, there at the GNACCR and, and IIT Bombay, if I correctly remember. And there is another special call uh, by the DST. I could see in their website for uh, another uh, center of excellence for CCUS. Last two uh, was carbon capture and center of excellence for carbon capture and utilization, CCU. And now the call is for CCUS. So uh, uh, I, we can see that. And um, uh, in, 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 in the Gandhar project, uh, the learning will definitely be with uh, we'd love to share with uh, in times to come because you know that as a corporate there is a confidentiality and uh, uh, and uh, but there is a there are significant things we have shared in that uh, draft report and uh, and and a lot of identified projects and the projects that you want to do ahead 
and ngri uh, niri uh, other institutes uh, iit bombay uh, these are few names and uh, are mark, uh, you are the leader in this in the academic side and research side uh, and uh, i can believe that uh, we we all agree with the multiple meetings with niti ayog and, and ministry that multiple centers like this has to be brought up and uh, yes i would i request you that uh, you uh, you uh, after this meeting is over and all uh, would request you to send send your cap capabilities and all to our 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 preferably to the ex director exploration who is our uh, who is the uh, who is the one who actually leads the all this activities on our behalf he is the leader director exploration of ngc and um, from there on uh, everything uh, uh, goes below to all of us reaches to us and then uh, we work forward so i request you dr amit uh, from niri side uh, whatever you, you your capabilities and you plan to develop and you please dr. Mitra, send dr mitra we have uh, lost uh, your voice sorry uh, please continue uh, I, it's audible to us uh, no, I, okay uh, oh, so uh, and uh, I request you to send a mail to uh, Director Exploration when you see. And uh, uh, if you want that, uh, the, what is the mail ID? You can note it down. Uh, we, will share. Well, we will share. Nimisha will share with you. And uh, in, in line with that, you can share with uh, uh, Dr. Amit. And uh, accordingly, we can, uh, we can really go ahead. What are the areas? There are multiple areas people can, we can work. I mean, these are very, very in a nascent stage of development. So multiple areas, uh, participation and and, uh, and collaboration can take place. So uh, uh, because I can't really say that which are the areas, because we know that there are many areas and multiple collaborations we, we would like to participate. Uh, but the channel is uh, has to be in the top so that keep uh, uh, we know what to do and uh, and and uh, how to go ahead with it. So I request to you and um, uh, and thank you, uh, Nimisha and NGI especially to give us the opportunity to share us. And for Gandhar project, just few lines before I uh, take leave from all of you. Uh, we have done done uh, significant engineering work as well as well as uh, the subsurface work, and it's a mature field. A lot of data. Nimisha, Madam herself worked in Anklesher CO2 project significantly, so she knows and. Um, we have done uh, work in Gandhar. UR sides, we have been doing UR for the last 40 years, so that uh, we that is one of our strength. But uh, UR comes sequestration, uh, we are also new to it, and we are also learning. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I can tell you one thing, that around 65% of the CO2 uh, injected for UR projects remain can be stored. And remaining 30 to 35% get back to the atmosphere because it is impossible uh, to actually, it's not a pure storage project, you can understand that. And India to go for a pure storage project, the first job is to be done that storage atlas. So what are the areas where it can actually do store things that work needs to be done. For that actually, uh, there is a timeline uh, declared in this uh, uh, roadmap around two to three years time. And it can only, uh, we have to have a storage atlas of India. And it can only be possible if all the agencies work together, then a storage atlas can be prepared. And at least the theoretical capacity can be established uh, with certain degree of some degree of certainty. And then uh, the operators can work out and then other part transportation and compression and and um, mon monitoring these two will come up. So uh, that's that's what I would like to offer today. And thank you, uh, Nimisha ma'am in particular and NGRI in general for giving us an opportunity to share a point of view. Dr. Amit, thank you for sharing your presentations and uh, thank you so much. I would not be able to continue, love to continue because I have to catch a flight. I'm in mean, Delhi, go back to Ahmedabad tonight. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Nimisha ma'am, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you so much. And, and we look please forward. stay in touch. Yeah. Yes, sir, Amit sir, please continue. Absolutely, yeah. No, no, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. So maybe we move forward uh, by inviting uh, Dr. 
SK Das from Sale uh, to share their views and uh, their plans on this particular uh, in this particular area. And uh, we are actually sorry for keeping you waiting for so long, but uh, uh, I think uh, important uh, and interesting discussions are happening. So request you to please share your views. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Pansiwal, uh, Dr. Nimisha, and uh, all the dignitaries uh, connected over this virtual platform. And uh, uh, really, I'm thankful to uh, NGRI and um, uh, Neri for giving me this opportunity to share our views. So, uh, from the first uh, first session, I was going through the, this pan this panel discussion and this presentation. And uh, really, I'm thankful that uh, I got a lot of information from you people and uh, is a good uh, uh, synergy of this academy and the industries and uh, i think this is the good platform so that we can uh, continue our this symbiotic journey further so uh, i am from the steel industry are you know steel is a very uh, hard to avoid sector as far as the gag terminology is uh, concerned and uh, uh, nowadays uh, uh, there is a uh, looming danger of this climate change i think by now everybody is aware of this climate change issues and the uh, loss it, it has inflicted uh, by way of devastating these uh, properties and their lives uh, really it is really really very concerning and i am telling it is the tip of the ice bar and if the things are not uh, taken care of well right now and then uh, i think uh, uh, our future uh, will tell you what will happen to us so um, with this i have got a very small uh, this uh, presentation to just share my views with you people so uh, yes i want to go through a quick uh, look on that uh, this uh, presentation huh? sure is it visible yes sir it's visible yes. So basically, right now the uh, climate change is a really is a reality. Uh, this uh, the world is on the path to warm around three degrees centigrade by industry level at two one zero zero under policies and commitments currently in place. Different pages we have taken in Paris Agreement and subsequently, but even if we follow those things, then too we'll be end up at uh, three degrees centigrade and this is we call this 3c world and i don't know this is far cry from our commitment of 1.5 degree centigrade 2 degree centigrade target enshrined in the paris agreement and if it happens so far as none of the environmental scientists has uh, just uh, anticipated what will happen if this temperature rise goes to 3 degree centigrade by the end of the century even with the 2 degree centigrade uh, there will be a devastation across the world the uh, sea level will go up more than uh, 800 uh, million people will be homeless then again the ingress of water in the uh, this uh, saline water in your uh, uh, this uh, water level so many things our communication system will be disturbed and already you have seen the number of these super cyclones and all this has gone up so this incident will uh, go on coming so that is really really very very concerning for the coming days so now what is the Indian response to this uh, climate change? The NDC target to reduce the emission intensity of GDP by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 level. Accordingly, the Ministry of Steel has also set a target for reducing GHG emission in iron and steel sector. There are two very prominent routes for steel making. One is blast furnace and bio fluid, and other one is DRI EF fluid. In the blast furnace and bio fluid, it is 2.2 to 2.4 tons of. CO2 per ton of crude steel and for this DRI EF road is 2.6 to 2.7 ton per ton of crude steel and uh, this per ton of crude steel and accordingly sale has set a target of reducing GHG emission to 2.3 tons per ton of crude steel by 2030 because we uh, and the entire infrastructure of this steel making of uh, sale is through BF and BF route. Subsequent to this Paris agreement in the last year we had a, a COP uh, uh, conference of parties meeting at uh, COP26 and there our uh, honorable prime minister he has given a clarion call to enhance the our current this ambition level and it was really 
he set the tone of the entire world by uh, uh, announcing this panchamrit what are the panchamrit to enhance the non fossil fuel energy capacity to 500 degree uh, 500 gigawatt reduce the economy's carbon intensity down by 45% uh, which was uh, 33 to 35% earlier 50% of the energy requirement through renewable energy uh, and reduce 1 billion ton of carbon emission there is a huge task of reduction of this carbon emission and the, uh, the, over and above this is the biggest uh, challenge to all the industry and uh, entire nation that is to achieve the net zero emission by 2070 and all the uh, uh, like all the uh, other uh, industries steel industry is also planning to achieve this net zero uh, net uh, net zero by 2070 at least for this sale we have uh, set a target of achieving our net zero by year 2070 so uh, this uh, we have got a three phase roadmap for this carbon neutrality uh, how to achieve this carbon neutrality by 2070 we have uh, uh, divided into three phase uh, in the time scale uh, first one is decarbonization phase one which presently we are in and in the uh, in the uh, 2008 post 2008 period you have taken up modernization and expansion project uh, full ramping up of the capacity of this uh, expansion project have not come up but with with this modernization expansion project we have so far we have achieved around 18 percent direction in our uh, uh, this co2 emission and that uh, accounts around around 10 million tons of uh, uh, co2 uh, uh, per annum and then uh, in the next phase next phase that is the our ndc phase uh, will re uh, reach our ndc target of 2.3 uh, tons of co2 per ton of crude steel by 2030 for that we have chalked out a uh, um, implementing strategy for this thing uh, will add up capacity with state of the art technologies and with all the uh, carbon uh, abatement uh, 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 these technologies in place we'll try to improve our raw material quality which is a concern for these days we will uh, go for some newer sources where uh, these impurities are less uh, we'll try to phase out our old uh, energy intensive units and uh, lastly and most importantly we will try to find avenues for uh, this carbon capture and utilization to be in the place so that we can uh, offset our this carbon emission through this carbon capture and utilization and the last phase that is the post 2030 phase that there will go for this uh, deep decarbonization that is our journey towards this carbon neutrality and uh, for carbon neutrality will definitely presently you know this uh, steel industry is a thermo uh, pyro um, this uh, pyrometallurgical process where uh, high temperature uh, the, everything is done at very high temperature and coal is the prime fuel and the reductant to reduce this iron ore to iron so we'll try to replace this coal with some other uh, other material one mostly this is which is environmentally benign and uh, uh, we'll try to have some hydrogen that is a uh, that is very very this uh, technology for this hydrogen uh, induced this steel making is a very in a very nascent stage once that uh, uh, i when we are quite hopeful that in the post 2030 uh, period it will take some shape and then we'll adopt that in our uh, we'll integrate to our process and uh, we'll gradually phasing out our older uh, units and and uh, gradually adopt this one and by 2070 our entire process will be this three this vector uh, technologies but uh, one thing is for sure, even with this, these things, we cannot, uh, 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 this equation of this uh, carbon neutrality will not be solved unless we go for CCUS and uh, we have to have some CCUS so that uh, we can achieve this carbon neutrality by 2070. So if you uh, come, uh, come to the CO, different sources of uh, this CO2 emission from steel making process, our biggest, uh, uh, this uh, emitter is our uh, uh, blast furnace area where uh, uh, the total emission uh, if you have uh, this uh, calculate this one it is 1.1 to 1.8 ton of co2 per ton of uh, hot roll coil here this is the highest uh, emitter of co2 and whatever action we have to take to uh, avoid or this ca carbon capture and utilization we have to target this blast furnace so why this need for this CCUS? so i have told you we are in the phase one of this decarbonization then we'll go to uh, phase two of this decarbonization. We'll try to achieve our NDC target. Then we'll go for this phase three de decarbonization, and uh, uh, where we'll go for this deep decarbonization. But uh, then too, this net zero will not be met if you if you don't go for this CCUS carbon capture utilization and storage, which will take care of some of the unaccounted 
uh, the, the emission which will be there, which is a must for the steel making. And with this CCUS integrated into our system, we can achieve net zero by 2070. So, as um, uh, in the first session, also we have seen um, uh, people are talking about this uh, uh, different uh, carbon capture utilization, uh, this process. Uh, basically, there are four types of sequestration this is biological sequestration, geological sequestration, ocean sequestration, and chemical sequestration. Biological sequestration, that is uh, uh, this different plantation and all, we have uh, made a very big uh, uh, bank of this uh, uh, plantation. We have more, we have planted more than two crores of these uh, uh, saplings in uh, different areas, and they have already uh, taken a mature step by now. And geological uh, sequestration, we are talking about this and then the possibility of finding the uh, uh, sequestration in this CBM beds and this uh, uh, depleted oil fields. The ocean sequestration and chemical sequestration is uh, ocean sequestration. It is a, a difficult proposition for sale because we don't have any. Uh, manufacturing setup near the uh, sea source, and the fourth one is the chemical sequestration, uh, either in the down the line uh, utilization in the different chemical products or absorbing in the chemical solvents. And uh, CCS involves three major steps: this capturing, transporting, and storage. What in our previous speaker also spoke about, but capturing is a very difficult one. Uh, 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 just to fix which are the sources which will be technically and commercially viable for this capture process because capture is a ca carbon capture is uh, is a very uh, co uh, cost intensive uh, uh, process then again this uh, you have to compress it and you have to make it fit for transportation either through pipeline or through uh, different tankers or shipping so these are the things then the storage again for storage also um, uh, there are so many problems uh, uh, there are problems of leakage and all so that has to be taken care of and when you come to this carbon capture utilization storage, there are two type of uh, for the steel making process. Uh, there are uh, two of the avenues where you can go for this carbon capture. First, if, uh, this is post combustion capture and pre combustion capture. Post -com uh, combustion capture is implies isolating the CO2 from the flue gas. CO2 is collected ideally by process of chemical absorption. And the second process pre combustion capture, the process where CO2 is separated from gas stream before combustion called pre-combustion, like our this blast furnace gas, cocoa gas, and this uh, basic oxygen furnace gas. These are basically used for this uh, as a fuel in the downstream processes. Before that, it uh, like uh, this uh, CO2, uh, this uh, BF gas and this uh, BOF gas, they are rich in CO2. If you can uh, capture the CO2 from these gases, that will uh, uh, increase the this, uh, uh, for this uh, energy value of the balanced gases, and this CO2 can be then secured, uh, sequestered to any any of the areas like in uh, geographical uh, uh, formation and all, and so that can give an advantage uh, of our this uh, GAG emission. So uh, uh, there was a uh, lot of talk about this enhanced coal bed methane uh, and uh, uh, this recovery. Uh, basically, what I understand that if uh, this is uh, CO two is uh, injected in this. Uh, uh, CBM beds to uh, aid this uh, uh, CBM ejection from this uh, area. So I think my uh, all the experts are there, the all academic and this industry expert on CBM are there. They can better tell about it. Uh, I am not a man of this field, so uh, I am leaving it to these experts only. So uh, uh, this is what is what is my understanding is uh, we'll be injecting CO2 here and uh, what. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Datta was telling about the two the uh, major problems of this CO2 injection. One is swelling of this uh, uh, coal seams, and another one is the permeability. Of course, uh, some uh, technical support should be there to take care of this problem so that we can conveniently inject this CO2. And uh, the future days will call about call uh, the maturity of this uh, technology for CO2 injection in this coal coal bed methane, and uh, this will uh, aid or support. Uh, uh this uh, uh, pushing out of this uh, methane from this uh, this uh, uh, in between the same spaces the different ports and wires available where this uh, methane is there so as far as our, our plants are there in uh, near to the, the cbm basins in ranigan area i've got two our manufacturing unit that is one at durgapur and uh, another one is uh, one is at uh, uh, burnpur 
they are very near to this raniganj uh, uh, cbm uh, basin and another project that is near the, our this bokaro steel plant that is also near to one of the uh, big uh, this um, cbm basin of parvati so uh, considering that we have uh, taken out uh, the carbon uh, co2 emission potential of this what uh, presently this our manufacturing facilities are uh, puffing out that is uh, in uh, durgapur steel plant around uh, 5.3 billion tons of uh, co2 is emitted every year uh, that is the, the last year figure to 2020-21 and in case of uh, isco steel plant it is around uh, 4.8 uh, million ton so there is a huge potential of this co2 if that can be uh, conveniently uh, uh, put into use uh, by uh, uh, in this uh, cbm uh, basins and uh, these are the uh, some uh, detailings of this uh, uh, availability of this co2 and if you consider the pre-combustion byproduct gases and there is to total uh, cap this capability is around 1257 million normal BTQ of uh, co2 is available for this uh, purpose and uh, if you go for this post combustion one that is uh, the gas co2 gases emitted from different uh, stacks uh, this, this point sources and they are in durgapur steel plant itself it is there is a uh, estimated capacity of uh, 2949 uh, million normal Q2 and similar capacity is there in our school steel plant also. So, uh, as far as this uh, CCS in steel industry is concerned, we have whatever uh, our as far as our knowledge goes, that is in the Abu Dhabi CCS project. That one project is there. They have got a uh, capture capacity of 0.8 uh, million ton per year of CO2 from gaseous produced by the coal based DRI process. CO2 is generated and it is passed through amine absorber and then regenerated through dissolver. It is then transported through a 43 kilometer pipeline to the uh, Rumaitha oil field for the purpose of UR. That is the only uh, steel plant where this CCS project is in operation. And uh, uh, as a concluding remark, what we can tell, cell uh, plants or units presently no such CCS projects in practice rather than conceptual stage. A project of capturing CO2 and converting it into ethanol, this bioethanol, is taking step in Chandrapur Ferrovalaya plant of cell based on Lanja Tech technology, that is one that uh, carbon capture and utilization part. And car carbon capture and storage in coal seams with extraction of coal wet methane is of high prospect for reduction of CO2 emission from steel plant and meeting the NDC target. Already the CBM is being commercially extracted from CBM block situated in the vicinity of cell plant, that is Ranigan block in West Bengal. Is close to DSP, ISP, and Bokaro block is Jharkhand is close to BSL. And only thing is now techno economic feasibility and commercial viability has to be seen. As uh, my previous speakers have were told, there are some uh, te technical hitch in uh, these processes like uh, uh, swelling of these uh, coal seams. Uh, if we, over we can overcome through some uh, intervention of the uh, uh, research work and all. So then this will be a very good prospective and uh, uh, area for CO2 substitution for steel plants. And we can uh, continue over this winning journey in the coming days. And uh, we can ensure a greener uh, uh, world for the tomorrows. With this, uh, I, I am uh, uh, once again thanking you all the uh, uh, participants who are connected over this virtual platform. Uh, and uh, you know, that's the end of my this uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Das, for sharing uh, the sharing your views and developments happening at sale as far as CCUS is concerned. So uh, we'll take the further discussion in the end, but uh, let us move quickly to other speakers. Uh, for which I invite uh, Dr. Paul from Tata Steel Limited to share their views and uh, their developments. Dr. Atanupal, please. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, here, more than what we are doing, I like to set what is the expectation of steel plant in this scenario. Because that is more already, important has, already has explained what the problem of steel plant is. Uh, if you see that, Today we are discussing two subjects. One is CBM, another is uh, how to sequester CO2 into either coal-based methane bed or even if 
can i do it in the coal seam which is abandoned so if tata steel is concerned we are closely looking the opportunity of using coal based methane gas into our blast furnace to reduce use of coal and co2 already we have done the piloting the challenge at this point is the getting cbm on a regular basis so hopefully the urjaganga project and others for srs are working we will be tomorrow getting more cbm for our blast furnaces to inject to reduce the co2 emission but that may not be may not i'll not say that will not solve a bigger problem which steel industry is facing and tata steel has committed that by 2045 we will be carbon neutral comparative to the government uh, commitment of 2070 for india so we are really looking what are the technology we can quickly adopt can this cbm bed give us green hydrogen because tomorrow for the steel industry to survive not only hydrocarbon we will need hydrogen also so if they can convert into this area the cbm into hydrogen and sequence the co2 to make the hydrogen blue so these are the thoughts and things we are looking into and uh, what i'm saying is that it is a do or die scenario for steel industry tomorrow if this things didn't happen we have to close down our plant we have no other option so we'll be looking to this fraternity those who are working to give us cbm those who are working convert the cbm into green hydrogen those who are working to capture co2 or making process on things so we'll be glad if any of those consortium we can be part of it because it's not a question of 100 crores or 1000 crores if i see how the globe is spending it is maybe lakhs crores which is needed and that can come it is a government it is all industry who are part of it spend together create a big mission so you experts are there i leave it the discussion to the you but we are keenly watching what you are doing and we like to be part we like to adopt this thing this is our survival issue thank you uh, thank you dr paul and uh... to take the discussions further uh, maybe nimisha can you take over to invite uh, other participants maybe dr rajiv dhar is next yeah uh, rajiv dhar is the best person for cbm <laughs> but uh, dr pal has put the question rajiv uh, yeah uh, to answer uh... Uh, actually uh, some network problem was just so i missed some part but uh, what uh, whatever it is so basically uh, as far as this uh, cbm is concerned and all this thing so uh, yes we all are ramping up and uh, he was talking about last part i was talking about uh, this one thing about that the survival of the uh, plant in the green way or something that is also in of course this is in addition to this global challenge of uh, global warming and this thing but uh, uh, coming to actually uh, as we understand that uh, we talk about co2 uh, storage probably coal is the best thing because if we talk about the uh, co2 affinity uh, of coal that is much more higher but uh, again uh, professor datta was indicating and probably uh, the till now the industry things what they are talking about that this uh, swelling and all this thing and the permeability gets uh, damaged very much with this co2 uh, injection so basically uh, so going forward what i believe that as uh, uh, at the same time we are uh, talking of more cbm gas as a green gas so i don't know uh, without uh, uh, having much knowledge of uh, the tata steel uh, mines and etc so maybe just uh, you can think for even uh, this udjaganga pipeline and the cbm operators are working definitely 
you may also think for some captive mines which may be unmineable coal or deeper coal for the cbm and maybe industry and uh, all these things again help you in that so that may be a part for uh, i mean i'm talking about beyond the company boundaries so in that way uh, maybe company level collaboration can happen so that may uh, reduce the challenge of your availability of cbm for your blast furnace right from your capital mines itself i mean existing mine itself and regarding the uh, this one uh, co2 sequestration so i believe that we have to have a very good uh, lab scale setup and the experimental team so uh, maybe this uh, may start with some core flooding experiment with because you uh, it will always this coal swelling part and the reduction of permeability and all this thing that will vary again coal to coal and cooling uh, being a very heterogeneous in nature even within the single basin in different part that particular mixture uh, may vary so it may be the, as uh, because we have also gone through some of the literature and etc that's all no actual practical r and d and all those thing uh, as per my understanding and the sir is not exactly in that way but uh, the researchers are talking about some gas mixture maybe not maybe even only co2 that is n2 and some suitable mixture for different coal seams which is actually will reduce the swelling of this uh, coal seams and eventually this permeable reduction will be less and one more thing we have to keep in mind probably this is the right time to start with because say for example sr we are producing for last 7 uh, 8 years and more than that and in some of um, after this uh, Udaganga pipeline and all this thing. Now we have actually started ramping up. And if you talk about that, when a well will be ideal for uh, CO2 injection, then it is in the at its mature life. Because with the Dutirma uh, can also uh, throw some light on it. Because as per our understanding and the literature, and we have also observing. in the field that as you keep on producing your permeability actually get enhanced because of the some matrix shrinkage and all this thing so the more you mature uh, the cbm well actually your permeability you have some permeability enhancement and you will probably able to inject so basically uh, maybe some csr lab setup and etc would be required uh, i think maybe simpar and all this thing and maybe patik datta have also have this uh, technology part that is uh, core flooding to understand the permeability and how much it can absorb at which pressure which is the uh, solution so that technical part can be i think uh, can be addressed with the proper research and all this thing and rest um, uh Mr. Das was talking about uh, uh, this uh, CO2 capturing part and all this thing, and uh, some uh, pilot projects also he was talking about. So that part also be, I think, we are little ahead on that. But uh, actual technical ground we have, it's a big challenge for us for actually putting the CO2 under the bar. What do you mean, sir? Yeah, so uh, Rajiv, uh, you maybe do not have uh, an immediate plan to inject CO two in produ producing wells, but how about this uh, unmineable seams? Uh, can uh, unmineable seams uh, see uh, for the CBM actually as you go deeper, uh, the permeability of coal seams further getting reduced. Say for example, uh, if you go beyond twelve hundred meter or something. so uh, because we are struggling with that in our basins in our uh, this uh, eastern block we have coal seams at a higher depth of occurrence even for uh, 1400 to 1600 meter so permeability goes down drastically and if you can't extract you can cannot inject in both the cases you have to have permeability 
so now coming to your uh, this thing that okay uh, now if we talk about the mining prospect say for example with the present technology and etc 500 uh, say 500 meter depth is a mineable cutoff depth for the underground mines also and you have coal seams say at 600 meter 700 meter which is has a poor gas content or the CBM potential is not there so that uh, pole seams with no CBM potential or less CBM potential can uh, at a shallower depth having so uh, because of the shallow depth uh, window they should have a good permeability range they may be think for <coughs> this CO2 injection as an unminable pole and for the CBM the mature field or the part of the mature field where you have actually good production of course, we are talking about good productions, we are talking about good permeability. Mm. And of course, you have a good permeability, you will have a good injectivity. Now, with the swelling, how it will affect that we have to check or simulate in the lab part. But that may be for so injection uh, for injection purpose, the batch you see down the line, uh, probably some of my wells will be ready for uh, five the after four or five years of production, they will be ready for the experimental purpose pilot. Uh, injection in a uh, high area because uh, they will be on decline or the production will be below the economic cutoff. So here we are talking about uh, injection of because theoretically we talk about you inject uh, CO2 full absorb four molecule of uh, CO2 and emit one molecule of methane. So that is what we are talking about for CBM recovery uh, enhanced recovery part. So maybe we have to uh, uh, keep it in this way two bucket that existing cbm field the mature one where you can actually inject otherwise uh, believe me probably the what literature is saying that even the cbm field uh, initially you can't able to inject continuously uh, it will cool will not absorb this co2 because because the initial matrix swelling and you will not get the pathway so you have to have enhanced permeability and for again for the uh, pools which doesn't have uh, beyond the mineable limit at the same time it is with the poor gas content or something that is poor cbm potential that can be a bucket of uh, potential co2 storage uh, this thing as an unminable pool so, uh, like your uh, fields are uh, very close to this uh, TSL and the Durgapur steel plant. Yeah, so, yeah. like if we are uh, proposing a pilot project under CSIR umbrella, so means will you be a partner in? That? Yeah, we'll be happy to be a partner of that. Uh, say, for example, uh, in the this one uh, initial part that uh, technical part uh, we uh, can provide our full samples and all these things for the actual experiments uh, uh, all these things but uh, of course uh, and uh, some of the logistic supports and all these things uh, we can uh, definitely provide an extreme uh, for uh, and going forward but definitely uh, with the present understanding uh, i'm not ready to put uh, co2 directly right tomorrow in my well because i know in that case my well productivity will get reduced uh, drastically so and i believe uh, for this r d work also it will take some time because i have i have also little bit r d background so uh, with that what i believe that i want to put something actually on ground when i am at least 90 percent sure on the lab because uh, when actually you are doing in the lab, you are, you are doing in an ideal condition something. And actually when you are in nature, so you have 90% confidence on lab, maybe actually you will get 50 to 60% or 40% actual result on the ground. So that even reaching to that level, I think we will be requiring a continuous R&D work for two to three years or something, or some uh, timeline maybe we are thinking for. And probably by that time also my wells will be also ready some of the wells if not well all uh, because i don't want all to be ready of course a couple of them uh, 
for the pilot experiment and in that case we can go ahead for the actual pilot experiment for the CO2 injection. Uh, Amit sir, what do you say like that what we have yeah. a plan under our uh, this pleasure of excellence? So. Yeah, definitely I agree with Dr. Dar that R&D is of course required uh, before we actually go for injection in the field and uh, this will be definitely be part of the mission uh, what uh, Dr. Nimisha has referred that initial R&D shall be it can be uh, in phase wise manner the initial phase will be like establishing uh, all these uh, facts and figures with uh, data and laboratory studies before uh, we move on to phase two which is actually uh, pilot demonstration and what I, I am forcing is a uh, can we go for some small uh, pilot demonstration small means scales of course we can decide decide uh, uh, mutually but what is the like probable site uh, maybe some abundant or depleted field or which is not which is not going to affect the productivity can we think of some such site that can be explored and uh, of course as far as this activity is concerned we are also very keen uh, wherein uh, we will contribute for capture and uh, ngra will take care of the the, the sequestration aspect and other consortia can be formed to take up this activity. Uh, sir, I would just uh, like to add one more thing. Probably, uh, again, uh, whatever I have read in the literature itself. Uh, so, uh, for injection purpose, actually for the CO2, you require a supercritical stage in a way, right? And uh, if we talk about the pressure temperature of that super critical stage of CO2, pure CO2, then uh, even for three or uh, four degree grad, uh, temperature gradient per 100 meter, uh, so we are talking about something 700, 800 meter depth uh, in that uh, depth, uh, this uh, CO2 in the pressure temperature range that will be the super critical stage. So that is also to be. Uh, um, uh, keep in mind that maybe we are targeting those type of pools in, sitting in that range or the deeper uh, than that. Because, yeah, Jyotirman. Jyotirman, would like to, please, yeah. Please finish. I will. I will come after you. Please don't stop for me. Just, just finish after that. Yeah. Okay, fine. So uh, that is the thing. And uh, probably we have, uh, we can uh, identify, and I think if CMPDI uh, or some uh, person from the whole India or the, they can also help us for this thing to identify this type of poses, which is not for the even CBM and not for the this uh, mineable uh, with respect to mineable purpose with the present technology. Uh, so that will be, I think, helpful. Yeah, so uh, the depth is, uh, there have been some discussions around depth and permeability. So a uh, few small points to consider. First of all, it was absolutely really uh, encouraging to see that there is this demand supply uh, sort of scenario already exists in, in India between the uh, uh, power stations as well as the uh, the the sink industry, if we say right now, uh, represented by uh, Rajiv. So uh, here are few of the things that needs to be considered. First of all, uh, the behavior of uh, coal while producing is really really strange. It's not like any conventional gas. So it's not only that the permeability increases with lifetime. So it's like a V card. Initially, the permeability decreases and then the permeability should shoot off. And when that particular thing would happen is anybody's guess. Very, uh, the wells actually de behave very differently from one to another. That is my experience, what I have seen in Australia. Some wells, we only see permeability increase. In some cases, a prolonged period of permeability decrease and then permeability increment. 
and it all depends on how this uh, sinking and swelling actually plays together and hence the the geomechanical aspect of coal is absolutely critical while we think about both uh, EBM production as well as CCS sequestration. So hence in the in the in the in the discussion I was emphasizing about the optical and geomechanical experiments uh, as a part of R and D together with the the QI analysis of of the seismic attributes, which actually can help a lot. Uh, regarding the depth, there are some very important issues to be considered. Uh, of course, the uh, it has to be an un unmineable coal seam that is being that is kind of the guideline. It should not have. I mean, it should not be very attractive in terms of uh, CBM production. But another problem is you cannot also uh, even if it is unmineable, you cannot simply sequester CO2 to a very shallow coal seam because of the containment issue. So you have to go at least to certain depth so that you can actually sequester CO2. And then if you, now the problem is if you go deeper, the permeability decreases, okay? So although uh, I, I completely um, um, adore the fact that uh, coal is a fantastic candidate for CO2 sequestration for many reasons, and especially for India, uh, coal should be looked with a uh, much more interest but uh, there are some very important practical problems to deal with. It's a very fine balance to find the actual sink. And that also requires a lot of R&D work and a lot of critical thinking before you actually commit to, commit to a pilot. But having said that, uh, even if uh, one of the SRs well is not at disposal, drilling a shallow, I mean, say 700, 800 meter well, from an academic project is also possible, you know. So if we, uh, and a demonstration can, is, is possible, you know. So if we can capture at a small scale, you don't really have to uh, kind of build a pipeline to bring the CO2. You can build it in a, you know, bring it in a vessel and you can actually prove that sequestration, you know, at a very pilot scale, at a very small scale is possible. So uh, rather with the R&D, I strongly think that there is, because if we keep on doing, I mean, I, I completely understand that, if, uh, 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 you know, having a very good R&D is important, but it's also equally important to demonstrate right now uh, or in next three to four years that we are capable of sequestrating CO2 at least, you know, at a very small scale uh, into the ground. Unless we do that, this, uh, bot, the, you know, bottlenecking will never go. So I, I highly encourage if we are forming an consortium to think around that line, if we can achieve that in a very small, because, you know, drilling, it's not an oil and gas well. It's a very shallow well, even if it is a deep well for CBM, it's not a very uh, uh, deep well with, in conventional sense, if you like. So uh, there is there is potential, right? So, and that's, that's, that's why I wanted to say, I don't know how Raji feels about it from a very practical uh, understanding. Yeah, Jyotin uh, Yeah, that proposal is uh, good. So uh, right now I can't uh, make any comment particularly on that because uh, we have to look, uh, look into that even. Uh, say, uh, um, as I was mentioning, that uh, even uh, say, uh, because our wells are already very close place wells, right? So, uh, definitely, I want to have first a laboratory simulation, uh, all this thing, maybe a core flooding and something with actual samples and the result. And then uh, definitely we took a call. What I believe first we should work, then we can run. So, uh, so uh, we should start crawling at least first with the lab experiment. That's what uh, maybe um, we can uh, start with some core flooding and see how it is absorbing and how much it is swelling. And uh, I think uh, if I'm not wrong, I, uh, I was having a chat with uh, Professor Dutta. He was. Uh, he is also actually working on uh, some of 
uh, developing some of the lab uh, setup that how much coal matrix is swelling when it's exposed to CO2 environment. So he is developing on uh, that. So that will be a very good piece of information. And so some baby step maybe. And then with that baby step, actually that is a fantastic proposal from Jyotima that yes, with that baby step, we have the understanding. And now we can uh, maybe may have a, uh, a baby pilot experiment in a way, right on the field. Uh, and if we talk about, uh, just to uh, give you an idea about the CBM, uh, uh, world drilling cost and etc. So CBM world drilling cost uh, because we are not talking about the fracturing etc. Probably in the pilot well, so it will cost uh, normally around two uh, for a thousand uh, twelve hundred meter wells. It will cost uh, around two point five to three years around. Yeah, okay, maybe um, we can have a follow up meeting to work out this uh, micro details and uh, we can move forward with uh, other participants and uh, quickly uh, discuss the other aspects and this is my thought. Nimisha, you can tell if we can move to other. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Praveen I means his Reliance Industries. They were also interested in injecting CO two. So maybe uh, we can uh, re request him to add something to that. Praveen ji. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Um, Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so actually, my turn is coming at the end. I think most of the points are already discussed <laughs> uh, by all the. Uh, eminent speakers. So uh, uh, the, I was already uh, given a quick feedback uh, in earlier session. So what Reliance doing is uh, Reliance is uh, uh, looking to have the uh, renewable energy. We are going to our target is 2030. China has given a target carbon neutrality 2060, and our honourable prime minister has given target 2070. But uh, um, even if it is 2050 or 70, they, uh, the actions are uh, not much uh, to meet the targets. Carbon neutrality or carbon net zero, so the, our, our energy requirements in India itself are 209 gigawatts. And all world is in many, many uh, gigawatts. But renewable energy utilization is the best way to reduce or to meet the uh, net zero. And at the same time, uh, we have to reduce all the uh, carbon emission from majorly uh, transportation, uh, cement industry, steel industries, refineries, and all these. Everybody, everywhere, uh, actions has to become. And uh, awareness to the people uh, and industries also has to be done a lot. I agree with, uh, uh, I think, Dr. Sujit. He has already made uh, his remarks. Uh, ONGC has already published uh, what are the requirements for the country uh, on net zero activities. And also, uh, I agree with Dr. S.K. Das. He has clearly mentioned now it is 1.2 degrees uh, uh, surface temperature increase. And if it crosses 1.5 or it reaches 2, and it will be a difficult survival uh, uh, on this planet. This a beautiful planet is only the planet we are uh, having a happy life. But it will be a very difficult in the future if we don't address uh, uh, this carbon emission or uh, GHG emissions. So um, uh, what I want to convey is uh, all industries, cement industries, steel industries, refineries, and uh, all companies, everybody has to uh, look into the uh, net zero uh, emission or what are the targets. I think uh, uh, the best way people are looking is uh, um, biomass utilization, uh, renewable energy utilization, and uh, hydrogen, so renewable hydrogen or the, by solar power. So Reliance, we are doing uh, uh, both uh, renewable hydrogen and the solar power. So uh, it's not possible for everybody to replace, but at least some extent uh, everybody can do. And CCS, CCS, everybody is talking, but uh, uh, it is not up to the mark. First of all, the question comes to uh, carbon capture. If you capture, that itself is a cost. And then it's utilization. And hardly we are using out of 40 gigatons across the globe, out of 40 gigatons, only 300 million tons only we are utilizing. 
that to out of 300 million tons majorly in evo so the utilization is nothing as on today if you ask me so uh, everywhere uh, i mean uh, chemicals uh, mineralization uh, cbm uh, co2 cbm i can talk and everywhere every aspect has to be done and i think the best way in us uh, how to implement how to reduce is in us they have introduced a uh, some policy this uh, rebate or incentives uh, is a q45 uh, policies so like that in indian government also has to introduce some policies some carbon uh, co2 utilization then everybody will work otherwise to initiate or to implement or to reduce anything is all capex uh, uh, related so uh, and economics if we want to use a green uh, energy or hydrogen or somebody uh, if you uh, ask to use it is a high cost and everybody look into the capex can we do it now so uh, it is not there uh, as on today for the regulation so some policies or some encouragement uh, has to be come from the government and all industry institutes uh, universities has to work together for effective utilization of uh, co2 and sequestration particularly uh, in cbm and uh, cevor and uh, basaltrox and uh, saline fps these are all only on the paper so a oh, lot of work has to be done and government support is required even for them so that's what i want to convey i think remaining all uh, well covered by all other speakers yeah but uh, pravin uh, is reliance has any plan to go ahead with this uh... CO2 sequestration for uh, means in yes, yes, good question, uh, Nimisha. So we uh, we have uh, various compositions of CO2 uh, we emit from different plants, like monoethanol glycol, MEG plant, and we have FCC fluid catalytic cracking, and we have gas equation. So different compositions, different uh, uh, compositions. Like uh, in one of the plant, 99% pure CO2 we have. so that we need not capture it is directly available then the question to whom should i give this co2 who wants to use it we are thinking uh, to look into the chemicals but these are all high capex uh, related and in chemicals hardly very small quantities of co2 only uh, will be utilized then the capex versus the utilization of co2 is uh, not going to address the uh, complete carbon neutral so uh, we are uh, in discussion with uh, uh, ongc i think uh, uh, dr sujit he has mentioned uh, for evor only the uh, depleted oil fields at gandhar uh, it's there so they have, they have working uh, pilot scale or demo scale for the last many years now it is ready uh, for commercial uh, scale so we have also given our proposal and we have an agreement we are in discussions our co2 from uh, reliance to uh, ongc oil fields so we have estimated or done some preliminary uh, calculations either we can send by shipping or by pipeline uh, that discussions are in progress but that is again uh, only uh, only uh, very small quantities of co2 yeah, but you are not injecting in your uh, coal fields coal blocks no, right no, no, not yet okay yeah that's what we wanted to the other ways uh, in the future we are uh, planning uh, uh, to have the liquefaction facilities and through shipping we want to uh, export uh, to other countries or other eor sections or other sequestration plants of the other companies okay yeah thank you thank you pravin yeah. so uh, uh, hello Uh, so i request now uh, paritosh ji from irs he is also dr sujit's uh, colleague to comment on uh, this co2 sequestration plans for ongc and how do we collaborate how can we collaborate okay uh, so uh, like already rajiv has told talked a lot about this and uh, rajiv is actually they are already producing we are still not producing and uh, so uh, uh, so far actually for uh, wells we are just relying on dewatering techniques for production and uh, we have done studies for ccus in oil fields like sujit has told about gandhar oil field but uh, nothing so far ccus mechanism as we know rajiv knows that it differs significantly for uh, oil fields and for cbm because one is absorption the other is miscibility so they are different ball game altogether 
uh, we haven't really done, we have no experience, we haven't done studies so far. Uh, of course, the good thing is there is a huge potential. Source and sink, both are available. Huge potential is there. I don't know what you're looking for is, you're looking for uh, somebody to take up a pilot. I don't think we are in a position right now to commit to that. I, 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 we, I can still, uh, we can talk about this, we can continue talking and I'll also talk to my colleagues about this, but doesn't look like the, uh, of course, uh, we we need to have a lot of lab studies, like uh, we, we need to know uh, where, where we want to inject, uh, the, the uh, we need to prepare uh, maps for where we want to inject, we need to have ascertain whether the trap is there, whether the CO2 which we inject will remain there or which it will go somewhere. And if we inject somewhere like 700 meters and close to somewhere where mining is going on, that is also hazardous, I think. So we have to take care of all of those aspects before we just go ahead and inject. So uh, uh, <laughs> right now, I don't think we are immediately ready. Uh, uh, still, uh, we will be talking more about this and uh, probably uh, and then I would like to add, because it's not just Gondwana coals uh, we can target. Uh, I mean, studies have identified other uh, places like, of course, oil fields are there. We're going for that, but then there's uh, deep saline aquifers. We have read in literature. We have never gone for them. And then the basalt formations. So that also we have to keep our mind open. Uh, but uh, I think uh, Sujit is the expert, actually. I, I was here. Uh, yeah. So that's it from me. Thank you. Uh, it's been great, you know, listening to all of you uh, talk about this. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So uh, now we can request Dr. Heman Kulkarni to wind up this session this talks but what we have discussed is like maybe uh, we'll have a separate meeting with sr um, means like ngra niri sr and maybe jatirma to see that whether we can go for a pilot scale project what we have already proposed and how do we start like i remember when i means like uh, 12 years ago when i was in norway uh, they were center for starting a field observatory but of course they have done all the lab scale experiment what Rajiv is suggesting. But immediately after doing that, they did not really wait for uh, any oil company to uh, give a well or uh, start properly in their reservoir and all. They started a field observatory and that they just, they brought CO2 and they started injecting in that just to see that how actually it happens outside the lab, whether this process is really feasible or not. And that result were really very good. and. Same thing when I returned back, I proposed here, but somehow those days people were not talking about the basalt at all. So that project was scrapped, so I did not get it. But the same thing we can try for this uh, coal field. Also, we can just see that uh, in what, in, how can we make develop a process, whether it can be injected safely and stored safely in unmineable coal sims. So. Maybe we'll have a separate meeting with Rajiv, uh, Amitji, and Jyotirma to finalize that proposal. So. Uh, and, that, uh, and, and Rajiv, uh, there will be a win-win thing for you. We'll do free mapping for you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so uh, And uh, actually, uh, uh, as far as Isar is concerned, uh, so we are uh, going quite aggressively. And uh, as Sanjay was mentioning uh, during the panel discussion, so we are in the microbial injection process, we are in other, uh, because we want to enhance the production uh, and all this thing. And we are also uh, doing some experiment and we are not afraid to do something new, but definitely uh, with uh, some R&D and with some background. Thank you. Thank you. Agreed, agreed. Uh, Nimisha, can I come in? Yeah, yeah please, sir. Please. Can you hear me now and see me? No problem. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much. I'm so much enlightened today. Carbon sequestration or C. Dr. Das, 
Pravind Ji, Jyotirmay, Dr. Rajiv. I think they were the eye opener. I think it's 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 much bigger than what actually we started off. Uh, I just like to say that uh, I had an opportunity to meet uh, with Niti Ayok. Dr. Saratos has taken a meeting a uh, couple of months back, and uh, he was very very passionate and you know uh, kind of uh, forcefully pushing down that let's do something in this area. And a lot of areas were identified. I mean, I don't want to get into that. But uh, more or less at the highest level, the decision has been taken uh, to address the issues which have been majorly you know, identified by the panelists and the eminent speakers, such as the regulatory part of it, or uh, fiscal incentive, or the policy related to the, you know, uh, uh, how uh, government, uh, which will reduce the carbon footprint. It could be based on the demonstration of any measures, let's say percentage reduction and so on and so forth. And uh, they were very keen that uh, all the scientific departments, be it CSIR, IITs, and others, chip in and uh, provide those kind of solutions or interventions to the private companies. Now it's a chicken and egg. Uh, we really don't know what is the priority for a particular company and what they would like to focus on because it's all a commercial interest conflict of interest and so many other things associated with it but as a baby step which some of you mentioned i think it would be good to start off uh, getting uh, specific areas of interventions which may not be a priority for the company because they may not like to take the chance but however there could be something which all the scientific departments put together so preparation of a database of the wish list the problems that the companies are facing and Ministry of actually PNG had uh, submitted to STAG that is the meeting taken by PSA regarding what SNT interventions they would need but unfortunately those interventions I mean, those, those specifications that they had mentioned were not very clear so we had to write them uh, back to them setting that kindly elaborate so that we can internally circulate deliberate and call for a brainstorm with specific industries and address how it could be taken forward. Now, we don't have a yes or no answer for it, but I think it's work in progress. And uh, one of the things that Dr. Saraswat categorically mentioned that let us take each kind of industry, be it refinery, cement, power, steel, whatever you name, or pharma, wherever these issues come up, uh, let's have some demonstration uh, incorporating one of the technologies which can be covered under CCUS and let the larger decision be taken by the company because it's an investment decision. So we uh, handhold the companies uh, in certain areas uh, in, a, in a consortium mode and that is why I think Niti Aayuk has already prepared a document where all these consortium uh, things are getting ready. I think it may be uh, awaiting certain approvals. But once that is done, I think uh, the roadmap of Ministry of PNG, DST call, I think everything needs to get converged. And one of the important things I think uh, we should bring to uh, from uh, CSR or the scientific department is to have a common platform where these things are properly documented and teams are formed and uh, taken forward in a logical way. Fiscal will always be the issue uh, that needs to be taken care by the government. It is not the CSAR or DBT or DST which can handle this. It's much more than what we can actually chew. But I think it's a, it's a, uh, I think I, I, I'm very, very happy with the deliberations. And I thought that uh, I would put in these views and some information that I have. And uh, I think we look for the guidance and the cooperation from the industry experts. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So Amit Thank sir, you. maybe we can uh, with like sale and Tata Steel, they are already interested. We have these uh, source industries. Then uh, Rajiv, we can uh, like group in for the sink and then we can have one consortia and see that whether our project pilot project we can shoot under this umbrella. Maybe like an R and D may not be properly in the well, but let, let's let's start something. Because at yes. least uh, maybe even yeah, if it... uh, but you, you're right, Nimisha. I think we have to take the baby step first, but we yes. must have uh, the industry on board 
mm -hmm. we must have clear demarcation as to what is their wish list. So it would be good while you and Amita are talking to the industry. Let us get the specifics with regard to, let's say, process intensification that they're looking for, a certain other kind of interventions that you want. And according the consortium can be you know, a kind of a form to address them. I think let's hear uh, one or two uh, experts from industry. How do they uh, see this? Yeah, Dr. Paul. In the point I was mentioning earlier, na, that what happens, we are doing lots of collaborative work. We are again going to uh, getting bonded by this baby step. So we have to very carefully think where we should take a step jump. If we need to think of experimenting CO2 injection to the coal seam, how much it costs. If we want to do it, how much help industry need to put, how much government can give. So how we make to the next step. Otherwise, what is happening is globe is moving faster. Again, we have to spend money by this technology before Indian technologies do something. That's our bigger worry. It may be doing when you are doing a steel research, when you are doing all that uh, CO2, CCS, whatever you call, because we are good at doing baby step. Academy is doing something, CSL lab is taking slightly more, but when we have to take it to the next level, we are missing the bus. So this is a new things and yeah, all but world let, is let me, at the same place now. So let's think how we make it and backup plan money where from it will come that proposals would have that i know so so just taking cue from you, your point let's take that we take a, a very major step not the baby let's say uh, uh, exponential uh, jump into the technology domain uh, how much funding would be available from your company and how much you are expecting from the government or other sources so it is not Tata Steel alone. All steel industry will ready to fund in, pull in. How we pitch in that? Right. So, so this is what, in fact, Dr. Sarath was said that when I mentioned the fiscal incentive, in fact, he floated an idea to create a fund to support projects which would address the critical requirements of the industry. Now, this could be a trillion dollar budget, or it could be a five trillion dollar budget, or it could be anything. However, government cannot put everything itself. And now, need not if, to if, be. If, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. So if if steel consortia says that we are willing to put in, let's say, one billion, and we would like the consortia or Niti Aayog or government or all put together to address one, two, three, will that be acceptable to, let's say, Tata or ONGC? I mean, ONGC will not be there, but steel companies. My point is, we have had issues where we face that there's a conflict of interest. One company working in an area wouldn't like to collaborate or work in an area where there is a competing company coming on board. So if the issue is while government is willing to create that fund to support projects or demonstration of projects, whether the companies would be amenable to form a consortia and share the technology or share the, you know, uh, the not exactly IP rights, but you know, basically sharing. Yeah, so if he's my steel product, obviously will be restricting to the other company to share with. But wherever is the sustainability project, I think at this point, at this when we discussed together, we had a feeling we need to do jointly. So who is so, not so the challenge? Sir, excellent. So can we say it like this? wherever there is a sustainability issue such projects will be jointly funded and whether this is a steel consortia or a cement consortia or whichever consortia we are talking about they would come together and provide that platform and put up that these are the projects which will you know kind of help us in our sustainability and we are we will be working together provided we have the technology interventions from the government is that what we can say, consider as a takeaway? That's the right way to think. Because Excellent. tomorrow, if you want to sell so, something, so, so so just, just sir, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, 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 sorry to intervene, sir. So yes, sir. may I request all the uh, dignitaries and industry experts 
if they could share such areas where they feel that these projects which fall under the domain of sustainability requires government support and we as a consortium are willing to come on board can can you share such uh, area i mean topics or you know particular snt projects which will not have conflict of interest or you know other issues i'll do so and also mark copy to indian steel association so that you can coordinate they can be a good coordinating agency to take all because all of the member steel companies mm. but as far as the tata steel is concerned we are into it but only thing is that these are these will be huge risk project and huge money to be thing so for one company it will be difficult to bear that cost perfect i agree with you sir but we'll have to take that risk in order to be That's somewhere it. so if it is jointly taken by consortium plus some government funding there's a way all big global like, uh, work sir that. Yeah. and we will also rope it all the dst or other coe set up in the country to say that whoever is providing the best let the best come and get shared with all the companies yeah, similarly upgrade uh, quickly right upgrade so, quickly is the challenge well well uh, i'm optimist let's see what best can work out from this but sex similarly uh, other than steel do we have any other uh, uh, vertical getting represented here who could also uh, share that this they would be willing mm. these uh, power companies we do not have them today but they also is they sometimes back they had interest but we don't have any i think this is a good idea namisha we can talk to uh, our networks in power or cement or refinery another or important company is segment will be cement because they are also very hard to have it absolutely so we could we could you know kind of initiate a dialogue on similar lines so one takeaway which i really appreciate dr pal and i thank you for that i think nimisha and amit we can have one joint session with only uh, steel industries focusing on those sustainable projects or interventions and work out something which is common to all and likewise we can do for other sectors also so that yeah. what will happen is whatever mlps whatever projects or whatever other proposals they have got and whatever network that we are de developing with it bombay or jncr and other coes we can you know kind of uh, have a pan cs a pan india snt uh, a platform to talk to a such consortia i think that would be one of the good takeaways from this yeah yeah we'll we'll arrange the next uh, follow up uh, meeting uh, let us start with uh, steel sector assins already right. we have okay. discussed so uh, extensively on these aspects and considering the proximity of the source and the sink sites nearby so keeping that in mind sir us... one more thing i wanted to uh, submit to dr for fiscal we are talking about uh, creation of funds if you could give some points maybe now or maybe in the brainstorm that uh, amit or nisha will organize later Uh, that would give us some ideas to how we should you know kind of draft the proposals or the agenda for the discussions and who should be involved in such celebrations from ministry side hello am i audible yeah we in the in between we lost some some of the sentences can you repeat yeah i was just wondering like there were other issues which many speakers talked about the regulatory the policy the fiscal incentive based on the demonstration of ccs interventions because each investment they would risk, uh, expect some kind of a uh, the benefit you know whether it's a tax or incentive or whatever so may, maybe something or some points on those lines which will facilitate a discussion and uh, you know kind of uh, uh, we can uh, take it up with the ministry respective ministry or even uh, submit to uh, the group led by dr saraswat at niti ayog 
Yeah, that I think that can be a good yes. uh, contact for this. Yeah, and also uh, I, I think Bishop Bixo mainly engineering thing. We should also have engineering firms as a part of this consortium, be it a bail or the student company or likewise. So that, uh, you know, uh, because we also need implementing partners. I think we can work that out as to who should be involved. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as as I mentioned, point in time. Uh, these finer details uh, will work, we'll work that out later. Yeah, yeah. 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 Perfect, so, sir. Mainly, I, I really thank all of you, though it's been a long day, but I think it's been a, a quite a learning for me. Yeah, so mainly uh, we are on the same page and let us converge and work out the way forward quickly. So for that, uh, few follow up meetings are required. So we will we'll, we will arrange Nimisha and we, myself will arrange that. OK. Uh, so if Dr. Uh, Tiwari is here, maybe he would like to. Uh, no, sir, he actually he had another meeting. So OK, OK, after panel. Okay. We can we can uh, wind up, sir. We can, yeah. Thank thank you very much. I would like to really uh, say uh, thank you from my bottom of my heart to all the panelists. I think uh, it's a it's a start for me, and I think uh, we should be able to take certain steps, uh, which may uh, lead to clear modalities for implementation of CCUS in India. I, I thank you very much. Thank you, Nimisha. Thank you, uh, Amit, and all the dignified uh, panelists, sir. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Dr. Hemant, and uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Thank you. Nimisha. Thank you, everyone, and accepting our yeah. invitation and being with us till late evening. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Amit and uh, Nimisha, can you stay back for some time? Uh, okay, sir. Yeah. Actually, though you can see me, I can't see because there is some problem in my mobile. Though I'm in the office, my system is down. <laughs> PC and all. So, uh, uh, but I think uh, Nimisha, I really uh, want to thank you. Initially, when I was attending this, I thought it was going in a seminar way. And I was wondering what outcome will come out of it. But I think the kind of uh, speakers that you have got, the expert comments that you have received, I think it's it's a uh, it's a uh, quite phenomenal. I think they have really hit hard on actual pain points of the industry. And now it depends on us how you take it forward. So, uh, first of all, I think it is very well organized and uh, everybody has contributed significantly. I want to thank both of you. And uh, second thing is uh, we need to also prepare an outcome report of this session. So maybe you would like to, you know, kind of put down some points and then uh, just uh, talk to Palak or Devendra. Uh, and submit that uh, outcome report of this event. And third is whatever we are going to take forward for the steel consortium. Kindly let me know. Uh, I would be uh, very happy to participate. Though technically I will not be able to contribute, but whatever networking and whatever uh, kind of handholding that you need from headquarters side, both myself and Darokar will be able to do it. Uh, what is your feedback, uh, Amit and Nimisha? Hello. Yeah, I think uh, we have. I think we have initiated uh, the right pathway. So I mean to say, uh, we can uh, really take this forward. And uh, industry is keen. What uh, what emerged from today's discussion that they are very keen, and uh, as rightly pointed out by MNG that we have to. Uh, really seek input, further input from them, what uh, exactly they are looking for. And uh, let us build this consortia and uh, maybe just a 
thought that uh, before uh, talking to or inviting other organizations, uh, let us have within CSIR what is our stand and how the higher authorities also are looking at it. We can brief to them uh, and uh, accordingly decide. Hey, the Amit, I want to. I to, sorry, I want to intervene here. See, Abhi headquarters position I see here. Because DG is not in position, it will be very difficult to take any decision. So only decision that you will get is in respect of uh, FCP and the initiatives that IP is seeing in terms of FBR projects. Now, whatever we are proposing is beyond this. It is not going to be part of it. So subsequently, I would like to see that a SR document, which may a consortia hum lete hain steel ka and jaise dr pal ne bahut sahi se ka ki ke sustainability pe hum jo kar sakte hain snt interventions usko document karke uski fund requirement chahiye karke and what is the expectation from industry from the government we will mark it to uh, niti ayog or and with the suggestion that let us have these these, these companies or institutes on board jaise coes ho sakte hain engineering firms ho sakte hain aur koi bhi ho sakta hai ya Consortium of CSIR. Ye document jani dijiye. Unse bhi feedback aayega. They will also feel that there is something which has been done. Or iske liye ek pandar bhi din lagenge hume. Karne ke liye. We will follow up uh, on daily basis. Let us see how quickly we can uh, prepare the document and uh, arrange the meeting with uh, the the industrial partners. So my suggestion Amit is let's identify you talk to Dr. Pal. Aap ye puche unse, tata ho gaya, aur si char panch hain, aur identify a nodal from different labs. Jaise IMMT ho gaya, ek NGRI se le lo. And each of them should follow up with those respective companies for the inputs. Ek banda karega to usko bahut kaam lagega. And in, because we also need to have consortium approach while we are discussing with them. So, hamare paas bande chahiye. So, if they are involved right at the beginning, it will help. Sure. Ye mera suggestion hai. Yeah, uh, let us first uh, have the input from industry what uh, exactly they are looking for. And accordingly, no, but to... industry is not going unless you talk to them. Just Dr. Paul is a straight, he is going to be a good guy. But उन्होंने कहा और तीन ये industries हैं major industries और उनके ये point of contacts हैं and then we have uh, uh, you know established a contact with them and then we input from them also फिर उसके बाद में brainstorm कर सकते हैं कि बाबा आपने ये projects दिए आप बताइए क्या करना है इसमें I think we have just discussed this but I think uh, we we I guess we are on the right track uh, I don't know how it's going to uh, actually uh, uh, 